It's said everyone has a story. China has almost 1.4 billion of them, from the mega cities to the vast countryside, from the ancient to the ultra modern. It's our job to bring these stories to you, direct from one of the most rapidly changing nations on the planet. I'm Joey Catanzaro, and we are rediscovering China. China's One Belt, One Road initiative is a blueprint for fostering closer trade, diplomatic and cultural ties globally. China wanting to contribute to regional growth and connectivity. China has been a, an important partner to Tanzania. A win-win situation. There's a lot of opportunities. Cooperation, connectivity. What do people from outside China think of it? This week, we speak to foreign business people here to find out. Guangzhou in southern Guangdong province is a center for global business. Here, people from all over are brought together by trade. Now, there's a plan to see that business and those ties go global at unprecedented levels. It's a new blueprint for fostering closer trade, investment and cultural ties across much of the world using a patchwork of new infrastructure, diplomacy and trade deals. It's called One Belt, One Road and there are those here in China who believe it's going to kickstart new economic development and give global trade and business a bit of a lift. More than 40 countries and organisations have now signed on to One Belt, One Road. Infrastructure projects worth more than 60 billion US dollars are already underway. This is Tanzanian businessman Salah Mohammed. While much of the world is still deciphering what the plan means for their nations, Salah and the international business community in China have a head start and a head full of opinions. In your view, what is One Belt, One Road and how will it be good for your business, for Tanzania and for Africa? Win-win situation um, because uh, uh, they will open a factory in, in Africa so our, uh, our country are going, uh, our, our citizens are going to get uh, employees, they are going to get taxis, you know. You can see a, a, a big project are coming, infrastructure, uh, so it's all about, uh, about uh, opportunity. One Belt, One Road means Tanzania will have a new $10 billion port at Bagamoyo and infrastructure connecting it to much of Africa. It's good news for Salah, whose company ships about 350 containers home monthly. Salah, this is where your goods leave China? Yes, this is an Anisha port, uh, which we have a mother vessel, direct vessel from here to Dar es Salaam. Uh, and we have a, a basic quick vessel, and uh, a month we have all four vessels. It's uh, going direct to the restaurant. The new port in Tanzania will be something like this? I think it's going to be something like this or bigger than this. Bigger than this? Bigger than this. New infrastructure in Tanzania will supercharge Salah's business by improving logistics across Africa. Of the containers he ships monthly, around 100 carry products, including Chinese Tiger Head brand batteries, which he exclusively sells in four African countries. The other containers carry goods for smaller traders who are also set to benefit. Can you see any new positives or negatives eventuating as a result of One Belt, One Road? So far, I know only positive. I don't have a negative in China. But they, they, they increase a lot of job opportunity. Actually, to, to, to provide the product which everybody can afford in terms of price, 
quality and they give us challenge as well to work more hard as the way they do. Mm. Is, that, is that challenge good? Is it good? Yeah, it's a, it's a very good challenge. Yeah. It's a very good challenge. Tanzania's ambassador to China, Mbewa Karuki, says when it comes to one belt, one road, each stakeholder has to negotiate the best deal. Tanzania is stable, rich in resources and has a rapidly diversifying economy. The GDP growth is expected to top 7% this year. How important has China been in helping Tanzania achieve this success and how important will China be going forwards? By all means, China has been a, an important partner to Tanzania in our effort to attain 7% GDP growth and consequently alleviate poverty. The figures testify to that. In the last decade, we have seen an increase in investment volumes from less than $50 million in 1990s to $3.6 billion last year. We have seen an increase in trade volumes from $1.5 billion in 2010 up to $4.3 billion in 2016. Of course, there is more room for improvement on those numbers. And certainly, with the rate of investment going on at the moment, plus initiatives such as One Belt, One Road, the numbers are surely going to increase. For Salah and smaller African traders in China, more jobs in Africa means more paying customers. More ports, roads and railways means more ways to get products to them. <coughs> Raw materials for some of these goods originally came from Africa. They've been manufactured into products here in China. Now they're being sent back to Tanzania for distribution all throughout the African continent. While businesses like this one are already thriving in Guangzhou, under the One Belt, One Road plan, this is just the beginning. And what do you think China has to gain? China will gain in different aspects. First, they will benefit from the opportunity to relocate their industries to Tanzania and other parts of Africa. Therefore, uh, they will have access to fast-growing consumer markets. They have access to raw material and energy resources of the youth for sub-Saharan Africa. China has played and will continue to play a very important role in upgrading of physical infrastructure in Tanzania and especially roads, ports and power. Chinese construction companies uh, have created more realistic cost benchmarks and thus facilitated infrastructure at affordable costs without compromising of quality. The benefits are indeed mutual. Hey. hey, how are you? Good, thanks, Great. mate. Good Welcome. to see you again. Welcome. One Thank Belt, One Road is also about sharing culture. A bite-sized part of that is already hey, happening in guys. Guangzhou, where Salah and a few of his 200 employees right. are about right. to share a traditional East African Lovely meal. Alice? Yeah. Alice is your uh, longest-running employee? Fantastic. Well, I'd love to speak to you later, Alice, but right. I uh, smell something fantastic yeah, so cooking. We're, we're, we're just cooking. We're preparing for a food. Okay. Yeah. All right. So this is this is where it's all happening. Gravy and this is garlic. It's a very famous food in Tanzania. Actually, not in Tanzania, East and West Africa. And what's it called? It's called ungali. Ungali. We have our staff, our Chinese. Sometimes we cook, uh, we call them for lunch or for dinner. Uh, we have our business partner, which are Chinese. We take them to African foods. Yeah, and they, they, they do like it. You like it? Yeah, yeah we like it very much. I do. You do? Like a metaphor for trade and opportunity, there's plenty on the table for everyone. Alice, you speak some Swahili, don't you? Yes, a little. Can you give us an example? Uh, for example, now the food we are eating is chicken in Swahili called kuku. Kuku? Yeah. Oh. Nakula kuku. Nakula kuku. Yes. Well, I'm, I'm enjoying my kuku. <laughs> <laughs> when you were little, did you ever thought, think you would work for a Tanzania company? No, I never thought. I'd long period 
In Guangzhou, we don't see so we don't saw so many foreigners. Is it a good opportunity for you to come here and work in China? And why is that a good opportunity? I get my experience into improve my experience for my the for my experience now. I can do any anywhere in international. We got to learn new technique, new skills. Uh, see things which we cannot see in our country because this is a developed country. We come from a third world country, so we get to learn new things here. Have many opportunities, many business, many exposure. That exchange, business exchange, it uh, helps too much for Africa. China and more than 50 other nations are banking on One Belt One Road success, literally. The Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, a new $100 billion multilateral institution, is working with governments and the private sector to make infrastructure plans a reality. This is Hamid Sharif. His country, Pakistan, is one of the bank's 57 founding member nations. Why does Asia need a China-led bank? Well, I think Asia need, needed another bank. Uh, the fact that it's, it's China-led uh, is, is the result of the fact that China is the second largest uh, economy in the world. Uh, it's in a position to put up the, the you know, capital. China, as it grows, I think, um, like other large economies in the region, um, Japan and Korea, for example, has an interest uh, to see regional growth. Uh, and regional connectivity. Uh, Japan has been a big supporter of regional cooperation through the ATB. Uh, I think China has been, has been part of that process. So I see uh, China wanting to contribute to regional growth and connectivity um, because that is good for China, but it's also good for those economies. That I think this is a genuine win-win situation. It looks like a gathering in downtown Islamabad, but this is Shaoxing, the town near Hangzhou in China's Zhejiang province, where the cultural and economic exchange promoted by One Belt, One Road is already thriving. At any given time, there's about 3,000 Pakistani business people here, and in total, roughly 20,000 Pakistanis do business here annually. Most come for this, textiles. One Belt, One Road means some of these traders are now considering investing in new Pakistani free trade zones. Among them, Muhammad Amin Natani, who has been running a textile export business here for about a decade. How important is China, business with China and trade with China, to Pakistan? The China market is coming a lot and Pakistan China products are coming a lot. And actually, the China working on the polyester, and the Pakistan market is doing the actually cotton. Cotton is very good in Pakistan, as you know. So when we start the polyester products, so we should be come to China. And once uh, 2005, I come first uh, first time I came to China, and it was my first visit and just formal visit. Just we visit the market, see the products, and we have some customers together with us to get the suggestion with them. And later on, we decide that okay, we can continue here. Yes. This is this is our finishing department, and from here we are going actually to finishing and loading, you know, rolling. So we are going like uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is our uh, friend, and he's uh, the boss of this factory actually. Nice to meet you. Yeah. 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 For thousands of years, China was a global trading hub in a network that spanned Central Asia and snaked up into Europe. Amin's people were among those who came here to do business. Eventually, though, the rivers of silver and gold dried up. The swaying camelback rides and trade caravans of yesteryear are long gone, but bilateral cooperation is building the foundations 
of a contemporary replacement. In ancient times, people would come to China from all over for trade along the old Silk Road. Among them, the ancestors of those who would go on to found the nation of Pakistan. Today, in modern day Shaoxing, the Pakistani people have returned and so has the trade. What we're witnessing happening here right now is the 21st century incarnation of the old Silk Road. Things are moving quickly. Works begun on the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, a road rail energy network stretching from China across Pakistan to a new port in Gwadar on the Indian Ocean. Where do you see the One Belt, One Road initiative in five years' time? And where do you see Pakistan sitting inside this bigger initiative? Announced in 2013 by President Xi Jinping. Yes, I so, yes. And look at the progress it has made in a matter of uh, four years or maybe less. Yep. That more than 60 countries, if my count is not wrong, or 65 countries, whatever, they have uh, affirmed their interest to join and more are coming in. So this in itself is a clear manifestation of the success of this new initiative. Of course it will take time and uh, with the passage of time I am confident that more and more countries will realize and appreciate its underlying spirit. Uh, which is, you know, cooperation, connectivity and inclusive development. In your view, what is One Belt, One Road and how would you describe it? One of the mandates that um, the bank has is to promote regional connectivity. Now we know from uh, many examples around the world that if you want prosperity and you want um, uh, growth in the region. A, 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 a big driver of growth, economic growth, is trade uh, and so therefore you need infrastructure for that. Uh, you need the pipelines, you need the transmission lines, you need the roads along which you know, services and people and goods can actually move. Hi Joy. Hi. Hi. Nice, to see, nice you. to see you again. Please. Sure. Come, this is our sample room. Okay. And this is our the products. This so is we are doing for the Pakistan market for the babies. For the babies. Baby, for the baby fabrics, baby garments. And this is all products we are doing for the winter winter season. And, and the mostly our products are being for the winter. So a lot of this material is made here and then it's shipped to Pakistan. Yeah, exactly. People buy it, they turn it mostly into baby clothing. Yeah, baby clothing. Mostly used for the baby clothing. Come on, I can introduce you to one of my colleagues. Please. I'd love to meet them. Please. So, how your travel and everything is good? Everything's been fantastic. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, good. Kevin, my partner. Hi, Kevin. Hi, uh, Joey. Yeah. Nice to see you. Yes. Abdullah. Abdullah. Hi. Hi. Very good, thank you. Uh, Very good, thank you. So they are, they are, we are together working. I think so, like uh, Kevin, 10 years. And we are 10 years, and he is a specialist for the unit knitting fabrics and all the factory works we are doing. It's a little bit of a, you know, a, a small one belt, one road. One in the belt. You've got uh, Pakistan <laughs> exactly. and China together. It's exactly, uh, exactly. I think uh, Pakistan people is very honest, and uh, they are what we talk, they will be do it. So, in my all the business, the Pakistan, all the customer. We are not uh, send a contract, just a talk, then we will be dined. This is the order. Just like we come here in China, the Chinese people are coming in Pakistan and seeking new markets. So they are coming, they were, uh, we have more chances to get our business uh, on the high level. So they are seeking good market and we are seeking some new material. For Pakistan, I think uh, the Chinese government have agreement with Pakistan government about 46 billion dollars and that is called we can say 20 percent of national uh, GDP annual GDP so we have a good uh, hope for that because uh, as uh, we think that this will create more than two and a half billion uh, million jobs are there any opportunities for your business in Pakistan 
because of what's happening with One Belt, One Road? In the first phase, we are, we are finding some construction companies and they go there, they can work together, one thing. And uh, another side, we want some hotel partners, they can go there, open the hotels, because there's a lot of opportunities, because people are going there. And there's no, no hotels, big hotels there, there's only one five-star hotel in Gwadar now. The call to trade has brought them to China, but the Pakistani business people here still answer their traditional call to prayer. For many, Shaoxing has become a second home. These exporters are importing their culture to China. In one year, uh, for probably we be to Pakistan just for one month or two months. In the eight, nine months, we'll stay here. So, uh, if uh, we call the first home to China, I think uh, I'm not be wrong. It's not the uh, short time; it's almost 10 to 15 years. So that's why we are living in in one village. I think uh, in one home. So there are, we all are together. In uh, um, that's why we have to be in touch with each other. There's even a Pakistani school teaching a traditional curriculum here for children, although they also learn Mandarin. This is the next generation that local business people hope will bring China and their home country culturally and commercially closer together. What does Pakistan stand to gain from this and what does China stand to gain? Pakistan has a good uh, geography uh, because uh, we are right in the center of uh, you know, two big neighbors. Then we are linked to Central Asia. Uh, so there is a natural access which Pakistan can provide to, uh, to China for transportation of its goods. So uh, I think it is a trigger for development. Uh, it will help Pakistan to uh, enhance its uh, competitiveness. Uh, we are thinking in terms of uh, not only infrastructure development, we are thinking in terms of trade connectivity. It is the entire uh, sort of uh, paraphernalia which is transformed. It brings prosperity to the people because obviously if there are no jobs, that means it is deprivation, poverty, and you know, related issues. One Belt, One Road enjoys a lot of support here in China. But what about amongst foreigners? We took to the streets of Guangzhou to speak with a few visitors and expats and find out. What do you think about trade between your country and China? Is it, is it a good thing? Yes, good thing. Everything is good thing. Really good thing is your system, the system. Do you think that trade between China and South Africa, your country, is it, is it good for South Africa? It's very good for South Africa because in terms of um, prices and when you compare your overhead costs, your shipping costs and everything, it still works out to be way less than goods that you can get in South Africa. But the only problem being with China sometimes is uh, they're not always honest. And you don't think India will sign up to One Belt, One Road? I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't look like... I would be happy if they would sign up for it, but let's wait and see. Have you heard of this One Belt, One Road initiative? And do you, do you think, in principle, it's, it's kind of a good idea to bring lots of countries closer together through trade? Definitely. I mean, uh, it's a global market. It's a global world. It's been great for me as a businessman, as an entrepreneur. Uh, I mean, I've, I've made great, uh, great money, and I've enjoyed the, my time here in China. So, yeah, definitely. I mean, I love the fact that China's doors are open and uh, accepting to foreigners to come here and do business. A Chinese man and a Tanzanian walk into a bar owned by an Englishman in Guangzhou. 
As far as they're concerned, there's no punchline, just the bottom line. And it's this. They say they believe One Belt, One Road will benefit their businesses and their nations. One Belt, One Road isn't just about big ticket infrastructure projects. It's also about diplomacy, trade deals and above all, goodwill between different peoples. Perhaps the cornerstone of this ambitious plan has already been laid here in Guangzhou.